Simona Chatter to you with Night Ridder Newspapers. Um, are there any satellites that NASA, the U.S. military, commercial uh, satellites out there that might have caught what happened and will you be looking at images from other satellites? And just about the debris as well, um, you mentioned earlier um, that you were anxious to see certain types of debris. What types are you anxious to see? And are first responders um, trained for the recovery of such hazardous materials? Well, we were anxious to see the, uh, the pictures of the tank. As we separate from the tank uh, roughly eight and a half minutes after launch, we have the crew immediately get out of their seats and use some uh, handheld uh, both still and motion picture video, uh, take some shots of the tank as we're separating it from it. And we do this on a routine basis because that's our only evidence of what the tank looks like after it got to orbit. Because the tank goes about a half an orbit around the Earth and re-enters through the atmosphere and is destroyed. So we have no physical evidence other than film. And uh, what we were anxious to see was that film, to see uh, if it looked uh, similar to what we had experienced on STS-12 where we shed some debris from the same area. Obviously, we're not going to get that information. So that's what we were looking for. Um, and if you ask me any other parts of that question, I've forgotten what they were. That's all right. Lisa Sylvester with ABC News. It looks like, judging from the TV reports, what, uh, what you've been finding are some these smaller pieces of debris. Is it, is it NASA's intention to try to gather as much as possible uh, and then to try to rebuild the shuttle much the way they did with uh, TWA Flight 800? I, d I don't know for a, sp for a fact, but my impression is we're going to gather every piece we can find, treat this much like an aircraft incident, and see if we can solve the puzzle. Um, that's not going to be very easy because, uh, b because when we had this vehicle break apart at 200,000 feet in Mach 18, it was at peak heating, and, and some evidence uh, may have burned up during reentry. Other evidence is just spread over such a wide territory uh, th that we may never find it. So we hope to get as much as we can, piece it together as experts think best to help us solve the puzzle. Okay, let's go to the Marshall Space Flight Center, and let me make a, another plea to limit your questions to one, and I've got 15 more minutes for this briefing, and I'm cutting it off for the day, re recognizing we are going to uh, offer briefings uh, at least daily from here on in. So let's go to Marshall. Jennifer Morgano, WVNN Radio. I understand the Marshall Space Flight Center managed to keep opposing elements of the shuttle. What specific involvement will the center have in the investigation? They, along with every other center, will be actively involved. We'll have their key managers, their technical experts, all coming together, uh, much like the teams we formed when we solved the flow liner problem of the summer and the recent Bistra crack that allowed us to launch SDS-107, the resolution of that issue. So we're gonna pull together the management, and we've already had meetings with the center directors, we've already had our meetings with our our management at headquarters. We're already assembling the technical experts in the teams. Uh, and, and so we're going to make wide use of their best and brightest to solve this problem and uh, try to understand what happened uh, and put in the proper corrective action. Stu Johnson, WHT in Huntsville. Can you tell me if you learned anything from the investigations of Apollo 1? and a challenger that will help this investigation uh, proceed more quickly. I, I think the, what we are implementing today is a process that has been tried uh, over time. And um, many of what we are, many of the procedures that we are implementing today uh, were a lesson learned or an outgrowth from previous uh, incidents. And, and so we're uh, learning our lessons 
we're putting them into practice and what we have put into place today as a result of previous lessons learned. Um, just a side personal note, it is, it is our mantra or our, our personal effort to learn the lessons of the past. It's mandatory reading for us to read the reports from the Rogers Commission on the Challenger accident. We study them. We understand them. We try our, hard, our hardest never to repeat the problems of the past. And uh, it was all of our goals never to have to sit here in front of you and describe these events again. And uh, we're very disappointed. It's hard to tell you how disappointed we are how saddened we are at this event, and uh, somewhere along the line, we miss something. Or we're going to learn something new that we couldn't do anything about. But I guarantee you, we're going to fix it. Kent Falk, Birmingham News. Uh, could you tell me who is on NASA's rapid response team from Marshall, what the role will be? and what role Marshall is playing in the foam debris investigation from the inter external tank? Well, there's many superb technical experts at the Marshall Space Flight Center that are going to be involved in this investigation. I don't have at my fingertips today the names of those individuals. Uh, if we judge it appropriate in, in the coming days to release that, we certainly will give that information to you. Shelby Spires, Huntsville Times, Huntsville, Alabama. Can you tell me who's leading this investigation from a center perspective? Is it, is it coming out of Johnson or will it come out of another center? Uh, no, actually, this is being led as a one NASA activity. We have a mishap investigation team uh, that is a standing team in case we have events like this happen. The uh, chairman of that mishap investigation team is Mr. David Whittle. He is a trained individual in mishaps. Uh, he has gone to NTSB school. He works very closely with the other agencies. He is NASA's commander on the scene. He is the one that's leading our effort. He is on his way to our staging areas and he will be our prime interface with all the other agencies to help us resolve this problem. So. Um, just, just a talented, marvelous team that uh, we'll have pulled together to go do this. Uh, and it's a team that is named prior to each flight, standing ready just in case we have to do just these types of things. Uh, hopefully, we never plan to use them. In this case, they're trained and, and we have pressed them in the service. Okay, let's go to California to the Dryden Flight Research Center, please. Hi, Nikki Jackson with KCDS Channel 2, KCAL 9 in Los Angeles, also representing all my colleagues here in uh, California. Uh, there have been 49 landings here at Edwards Air Force Base. When the Challenger disaster happened, it's my understanding that there was a two and a half year hiatus. You have mentioned within this press conference that future flights might be held. Can you tell me what the impact of today's terrible events will have on us here at Edwards Air Force Base? Well, I suspect they're not going to, you're not going to feel much impact at all at the uh, Edwards Air Force Base complex. Uh, Edwards is used as our secondary landing site in case we have bad weather in Florida and do not have sufficient consumables to attempt to get into the Florida and Kennedy Space Center uh, facilities. Um, Recall in Challenger, one of the reasons why it was such a long delay was because we had to do some hardware redesign to make ourselves, uh, to get ourselves the confidence that uh, we were safe to fly. That hardware redesign was necessary uh, to be implemented, to be developed, to be tested and certified, uh, and that took some time to do. We'll just have to see how this particular tragedy uh, works through the same type of, of uh, engineering and technical scrutiny. If there is some 
hardware change, we'll just have to work through that, and we'll work through that with the, dealing with the requirements that keep us safe to fly, a development, a design, certification, testing type of process. Too early yet to say whether or not that's going to be the case, uh, and we'll, just, we'll, we'll let you know how it proceeds. Okay, let's go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for one question. Soraya Fidel with KCBS KCAL Los Angeles. Thanks again for taking our question. How is NASA responding to the family? What has NASA told the family? And what are families saying today? How are they reacting and responding in light of all this? I believe earlier in the day, Mr. O'Keefe made a statement that reflects the reaction of the families uh, and their uh, heroic um, manner that they took the news and and I I don't want to add any more than what has already been previously stated as as to the